Again, thank you so much. And um, I want to speak today on the subject of madness and violence. Now, if you ever do a study on the word violence or violent in scripture, the word violence is found 56 times in the King James Version. 56 times. And the word violent is found 20 times. That's a total of 76 times the word violence or violent is mentioned in scripture. And so God has a lot to say about violence and violent men. Here's a verse, Psalms 11 and 5. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. So God hates those that love violence. That's God's attitude towards violence because violence is so destructive. It, it causes murder, genocide, fratricide. Uh, we talked yesterday. Um, one of the one of the uh, one of the leaders in the room brought up that madness goes along with murder. Murder is madness. You find that with Cain killing Abel, and throughout the scriptures where there's murders uh, in history, uh, genocides, mass murders. That's all madness in the minds of of men. Then I I love this verse Isaiah sixty eighteen. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. So being in the kingdom means that we don't have violence in our lives. We're not violent people. We don't operate in violence. We don't operate in murder. Okay, we operate in peace and shalom. But outside the kingdom, there is madness. There is murder. There is violence. Um, the days of Noah were days of violence. You find that in, in, in Genesis chapter six, the Bible describes the days of Noah as a time of unparalleled wickedness and violence rooted in the corruption of the human heart. Genesis six, five says the Lord saw not how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The description aligns with Ecclesiastes 9.3, which declares the hearts of the children of men are full of evil and madness is in their hearts. Madness is in the heart. Together, these scriptures illustrate the connection between violence, madness, and the depravity of humanity. Uh, Genesis 6, 11 through 13 reveals the state of the earth in Noah's time. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and the earth was filled with violence. The earth was filled with violence, murder, bloodshed, war, violence. This violence was, was not random, but was fueled by humanity's rejection of God and a descent into moral and spiritual madness. Madness, as described in Ecclesiastes, is not merely mental instability, but irrational, senseless, and destructive behavior stemming from a heart turned away from God, which is why men need salvation, which is why we need to be born again, which is why you need a new heart, a new spirit, according to Ezekiel, a new covenant, a, a new relationship, because if you don't have a new heart, madness resides in your heart. To some extent, your mind. Uh, again, madness is the default position of the mind separated from God. So you may not consider yourself to be mad, but the Bible calls it madness. And um, we're not talking about clinical madness. We're talking about biblical madness, even though there can be some overlap. The madness of Noah's generation manifested in his widespread wickedness, self-destruction, and disregard for God's laws. Their violence was a symptom of hearts corrupted by sin where rebellion against God turned into lawlessness against others. Uh, Jesus alludes to this in Matthew 24, 37 through 39, uh, comparing the last days to Noah's time where people continued in their self-indulgence and wickedness until judgment came. Um, as a matter of fact, the last days of Israel the last days of the old covenant age were a time in which the same uh, conditions as were in Noah's day were in that particular day. Noah, uh, Noah 
God's judgment upon Noah's generation was with a flood. And God's generation, a, a judgment upon that generation was with a flood. And not a, not a physical flood, but the, the Roman armies came and Israel was taken away like, like a flood. Very similar. The temple destroyed, judgment came because of the lawlessness and the violence of that generation. I'm going to be talking in my upcoming webinar about two Caesars. One was Tiberius Caesar, who was the Caesar that was alive when Christ was crucified. And the second one was, was Nero Caesar. Both very wicked, mad leaders, madness. They're both found in scripture, uh, alluded to in scripture, Tiberius Caesar and Nero Caesar, both mad. And that was the time of the early church when you had a mad Caesars in control. And there was so much violence and, and bloodshed in the earth at that particular time. Uh, the Bible talks about the violent man in scripture. The Bible often describes the violent man as one who embodies madness through aggression, cruelty, and disregard for righteousness. Proverbs 16, 29, a violent person entices their neighbor and, and leads them down a path that is not good. The violent man not only can, commits acts of harm, but also influences others to follow in his destructive ways, spreading madness and chaos. Psalms 11, 5, the Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Violence is inherently opposed to God's character and those who love violence act in direct defiance of him. Psalms 140 verses one and two. Rescue me, Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from the violent who devise evil plans in their hearts and stir up war every day. The violent man is characterized by a heart that constantly plots evil, revealing the madness of a mind dominated by sin. And then Micah chapter two, verses one and two. Woe to those who devise wickedness and work evil on their beds. When the morning dawns, they perform it because it is in the power of their hand. Violence often begins in the heart and mind, showing the link between ex internal madness and external destruction. Uh, the spiritual madness of violence. The connection between violence and madness is rooted in the heart far from God. Violence in biblical terms is not merely physical aggression, but includes the desire to dominate, oppress, and destroy. Genesis 6 presents humanity's violence as a result of spiritual madness, living as though there is no accountability to God. Um, Ecclesiastes 9.3 emphasizes that madness is in their hearts while they live. This madness leads to actions that defy reason and morality. It explains why violent individuals justify their actions, ignore the consequences, and perpetuate destruction. God's response to this madness was a flood. In response to the violence of Noah's generation, God declared, I would destroy them with the earth. Genesis 6 verse 13. The flood was not just a judgment on sin, but a divine response to the madness that it consumed humanity. You know, if, if, if God does not intervene when there is madness, when madness gets out of control, then man will destroy himself or, or destroy others. So God does intervene where there is violence and madness. God's judgment does come. God does send a flood of judgment because if he doesn't, total destruction will occur. God had to eliminate this generation, only Noah and his family remain to really start a new world to start all over. Again, the flood was not just a judgment on sin, but a divine response to the madness that had consumed humanity. The earth's cleansing through water was a reset, a reminder that God will not allow unchecked violence and rebellion to go unpunished. Despite the grim picture of madness and violence, the Bible offers hope for deliverance. God's call to righteousness. Noah is described as a righteous man who walked with God. He stands as a beacon of hope, showing that even in violent, in a violent and corrupt world, it is possible uh, to live righteously through obedience to God. Jesus Christ is, of course, the ultimate deliverer. 
the black, the madness of sin and violence is ultimately addressed through Jesus. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, the punishment that brought his, us peace was on him and by his wounds, we are healed. Through his sacrifice, Jesus broke the power of sin and made peace possible for those who trust in him. The new heart and new spirit, uh, Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27. From promises, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. This transformation is the antidote to the madness and violence of the old nature. So the heart of man is madness, but the new heart and the new spirit that God promised through salvation takes away that madness and causes us to live with a sound mind. What are the lessons we can learn? Number one, guard your heart. I've been saying this often. Proverbs 4.23 reminds us to guard our hearts as the heart is the source of life. A heart aligned with God's God resists the madness of sin and the lure of violence. You know, I wouldn't even recommend that you watch violent movies. Um, some movies are just too violent, too much bloodshed. You don't need to put that in your mind. Um, uh, even violent video games that you let your children play. It, you don't need that spirit coming into your children. You don't want them to become mad by watching violent horror pictures, uh, pictures full of witchcraft, pictures full of perversion, movies. These things carry spirits and they can drive you into madness. Uh, seek peace and pursue it. Psalms 34, 14 calls believers to turn from evil and do good, to seek peace and pursue it. This is a, a counter to the violence and madness prevalent in the world. And then three, trust in God's justice. Romans 12, 19 assures us the vengeance that vengeance belongs to the Lord. Trusting in God's justice allows us to resist the urge to respond to violence with violence. Thank you for sharing today's broadcast. Uh, those on, on uh, Facebook, please type in No More Madness. Type it in No More Madness, No Violence, and share the broadcast. And if you want to sow through Clubhouse, uh, through Facebook rather, remember, hit the star button next to the heart and like button. Okay, what's the conclusion? The days of Noah and the violent man described in scripture remind us of the devastating effects of madness and violence on individuals and societies. However, God's word offers both a warning and a solution. By turning to God in repentance, trusting in his justice, and living according to his ways, we can break free from the cycle of madness and violence and walk in the peace and righteousness of his kingdom. You know, one of the, one of the um, scriptures that really talks about the kingdom is that the wolf shall lie, lie down with the lamb. No violence, no murder, the kingdom, peace, shalom. Uh, two enemies, wolves and lambs, the, uh, the lion and the lamb. Isaiah 11, Isaiah 65 shall lie, lie down together. That's not physical. That's a, a metaphorical picture of enemies. And in that context, Jews and Gentiles, former enemies coming together, being, being brought together through the cross and having peace and having shalom. One of the benefits of salvation is you become a peaceable person. If you're a person that's full of strife, whenever there's envy and strife, there's confusion. There is madness. You're peaceable. You're kind. You're loving. You don't fight. You don't argue. You're not in strife. You're not violent. You're not a hateful person. You don't murder, which is cannot. The Bible says he that hates his brother is a murderer. So that's the opposite of the madness that's connected to murder and violence. You have a sound mind, a peaceful mind. You're a tranquil, a tranquil person. You're a peaceable person. You walk in peace and shalom. You're not fighting. It's amazing how much fighting I see online between Christians. That is not the nature of God. That is not the nature of Christ for to be fighting and arguing and, and uh, in contention and strife and cursing people and commanding people to die by fire. That's not godly. That, that's not, that's not peaceable. Uh, that is not, that is madness. So be delivered from it. I pray that you have the spirit of a sound mind, 2 Timothy 1, 6, that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind, Ephesians chapter 4, 
and that you'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind, um, uh, Romans chapter 12, and that you'll have a new mind and a new heart, Ezekiel chapter 36. Father, I bless them. I speak your favor, your peace, and your shalom upon them. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, again, thank you. If you want to sow a seed, you're being blessed by the teaching. Again, don't forget the two books on madness. Do a further extensive study with me. Deliverance and Healing from Madness. And then When Kings Go Mad. Both available at Amazon.com. And don't forget to sign up for next week's webinar by going to JohnEckhart.tv. That will be next Tuesday, November 26th. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Remember, if you missed the live, you always get a chance to watch the replay. I'm going to be dealing with, with the Caesars, Madness, Paul, the Apostolic Ministry, uh, the early church, how they actually were birthed in a time of madness and had to contend with that. And sometimes the church has to contend with it today because of all the madness that is around us. Well, be encouraged. Thank you so much for your giving, your sowing, your participation. We're going to cover this more and discuss it more in Clubhouse. And as always in departing, until you hear from me again, God bless you and double shalom. God bless.